Okay, so solving our equations, 1 on 6, so really we have 1 on cos x equals 2, which implies then that cos x equals a half if we turn everything upside down. So from our cos is positive here and there, cos of one angle implies x is equal to, uh, for my base angle, cos inverse of a half, which is pi on 3. So between 0 and 2 pi, we're going to have x is equal to pi on 3. What's that? 6 on 3 less 1 is 5 pi on 3. Job done. Same sort of thing. So cosec is sine. So if I just flip this left-hand side to be sine, which is my equals negative 3 over 2 root 3. So let's rationalise that. Um, and I'm going to get negative 3 root 3 over 3 threes. Root 3 root 3 is 3, 6, which is equal to negative root 3 on 2. So we do have an exact value there. Sine is negative here and here. Uh, sine of pi on 3 is root 3 on 2. So let's start at 0. So we've got twice around because of the 2x. And we're going to add to our final answer. So we can start, well, actually, let's start down here. Let's start that at 0. So I'm going to start at minus pi on 3. So we get 2x minus pi on 3 is equal to minus pi on 3, come to 0, to pi, uh, 4 pi on 3, around to 6 on 3, minus 1, 5 pi on 3, better go around twice, uh, 6 on 3, so 9 on 3 plus 1 is 10 pi on 3, and then the final one is 12 on 3 minus 1, which is 11 pi on 3. Let's add pi on 3 to every answer. I get 0, 5 pi on 3, 6 pi on 3, 11 pi on 3, 12 pi on 3. Divide everything by 2. So my final answers for x will be equal to 0. 5 pi on 6, pi, which is 6 on 6, 11 pi on 6, 12 pi on 6, which is 2 pi. And so in reality, it's not much different to what we've been doing with just our trig functions in, um, in methods. All right, let's have a look at the last one here. The graph of y equals ax plus pi on 2 intersects the graph of cos inverse of x three times if. What does that mean? Cos inverse of x is, uh, I suspect, what have we got? We have um, positive one, negative one, zero, to pi, isn't it? Right. Now, this is more of a gradient question, really. So technically, maybe we're not quite here. So what's got to happen for it to intersect three times? Ax plus pi on 2. Well, there's pi on 2 there. So what we're talking about is a line that goes through there. So that'll intersect three times. And as flat as we can go would be to there, wouldn't it? Because that's going through if the gradient is zero. So what's this gradient here? So the gradient of that line there is, so of the blue line, the gradient of that blue segment there is rise over run which is, so it goes up a total distance of pi, 
and its run is 2. So the gradient of that line is pi on 2, in fact, negative pi on 2. Yeah. So exactly 3 times if. So it can be at negative pi on 2. If I scroll around down to here, it gets to 0, which is no good. So I'm thinking negative pi on 2 is less than or equal to a, which is less than or equal to, let's think about this next point. Obviously, 0 is too far, but even if we go in a little bit less than that, I think we're not going to get that gradient there. I think what we'll find is if we do a little bit of calculus, we're going to need the gradient to keep it um, greater than negative 1. So if we do a little bit of guessing checking just to confirm, since we've got a CAS available to us, I was initially going to say 0, but obviously that's not an option. So, well, that's not going to be the answer. So we're ha very happy with that. So it has to be negative 1. And in fact, if you check, if you check the point of intersection between y equals minus x plus pi on two, and um, cos inverse of x, there is only one solution at x equals zero. Whereas if we go negative one point one x, you'll get three. Okay, so a is going to be our answer there. Oh, it's over there. Okay, solve with our trig identities. Sine 2x is 2 sine x cos x. Bring the cos x over. So we get 2, what's that? I'll make a, a cos x at the front of 2 sine x minus 1 equal to 0. This is where we spoke about not cancelling cos x's out because now my solutions are at cos x equal to 0 or 2 sine x minus 1 equal to 0. So cos x is equal to 0 implies x is equal to what? Between 0 and 2 pi, pi on 2 and 3 pi on 2, or sine x equal to a half, which means x is equal to pi on 6 and 5 pi on 6. So if we just cancel out because we've got a cos on both sides, we lose those solutions, okay? Uh, sine 4x equal to sine 2x. It's going to be similar, isn't it? So sine 4x is equal to 2 sine 2x cos 2x minus sine 2x is equal to 0. So if I take sine 2x at the front, I would get 2 cos 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. So almost identical from here. Sine 2x is equal to 0, or cos 2x is equal to a half. So that means that 2x is equal to 0 pi uh, 2 pi 0 pi 2 pi 3 pi 4 pi or 2x is equal to well, pi on 3 is the angle we're interested in cosine positive there and there so let's go pi on 3 5 pi on 3 6, 7 pi on 3, and 11 pi on 3, because now when we divide by 2, my answers are going to be equal to 0, pi on 2, pi, 3 pi on 2, 2 pi, or pi on 6, 5 pi on 6, 7 pi on 6, 11 pi on 6. I'm assuming the endpoints are included. I can't remember the question. Okay. 
Okay, so what we're looking to do here is try to get COSX into SINEX or SINEX into COSX. And it's probably easier from our double angle formula, we know that cos 2x is 1 minus sine squared x. So that implies then that cos x, we're going to halve that angle, is 1 minus sine squared a half x, half that angle. So now if we do a straight swap for cos x, I get 1 minus sine squared a half x. Let's put that down there. Is equal to sine a half x. So rearrange, take everything to the right hand side. I get sine squared x on 2 plus sine x on 2 minus 1 equal to 0. So if we do some, super, some substitution, that really gives me u squared plus u minus 1 is equal to 0. Actually, there's a 2 in there, isn't there? It should be a 2 sine squared if we check our formula sheet. Because 2u and u, 1, 1, negative 1, gives me a 2u minus u, which is u. So that gives me 2u minus 1, u plus 1 equal to 0. So now if we solve those, substitute our u back in, that's 2 sine x on 2 minus 1 is equal to 0. Or, I'll do it here. Or u sine x on 2 plus 1 is equal to 0. So that means sine x on 2 is equal to a half. X on 2 is equal to sine of what angle is a half. So that's pi on 6. Pi on 6. 5 pi on 6. I'll put a 7 pi on 6 here, but we'll see that'll be too big. X is equal to multiply the 2 across. We get pi on 3. 5 pi on 3. 7 pi on 3, which is too big. So we get those two solutions from that side. Here we get sine x on 2 is equal to negative 1. So negative 1, that makes it equal to, well, it's negative pi on 2 or 3 pi on 2. If we are multiplied by 2, negative pi and 3 pi, neither one of those are in the domain that we need. So my only two solutions... Are those two there? All right. Just the last little thing that we sort of play around with is the maximum and minimum values of trig functions. And normally when we see find a max or a minimum, we think of calculus, which can do. But with our trig functions, it's often easier just to keep in mind the fact that sine x is bound between negative 1 and 1 and cos x is also bound between negative 1 and 1. So for example... I want to find the maximum value of 2 sine x plus 1, or the minimum. So the maximum will happen when, in this case, sine x is equal to 1, because that's the highest sine x can be. So then y will be 2 times 1 plus 3, which is equal to 5. And the minimum occurs when sine x is equal to negative 1. So y will equal 2 times negative 1 plus 3, which is equal to 1. So there's my maximum value and there's my minimum value. Similarly, it's the same function. So when the, because it's a reciprocal, when the maximum occurs, that'll be a minimum. So the minimum value will be y when y is equal to 1 over basically 5, because that's the 5 up there, 1 fifth. And my maximum value will happen when y is a minimum, which in this case is 1 over 1, which is 1. All right. Finally, there's a little video link there you could click on. Um, 
take you to the YouTube solution of this. Or if we have multiple reputations of sine and cos, let's try to eliminate either sine or cos, so it's only one of them there. So in this case, well, sine squared plus cos squared is one. So we get to there. So three sine, sine theta, cos theta should ring some bells in terms of our, whoops, in terms of our double angle. We know that sine two theta is equal to two sine theta cos theta. So it implies then one half sine two theta will equal sine theta cos theta. So there's the sine theta cos theta expression. So I'm going to have y equals one plus three times a half sine two theta. So the expression simplifies to Yeah. And so again, my maximum and minimum occur at one and negative one for sine theta, or sine two theta in this case. So my maximum will be equal to one plus three on two times one, which is equal to five on two. And my minimum will equal one minus three on two times one, which is negative a half. Okay. Go to it.